Okay, everybody, what is going on? Um, look, I just want to do a quick pop up, a little fireside chat. Talk to everybody just a little bit. Uh, when everybody can hear me, just kind of let me know you're on. Let me know you can hear me. Just kind of like you can put a, like a one or I can hear you or something like that um, in the feed. That'd be cool. Um, I'm actually testing out some rubs tonight. And uh, um, we're going to see which one we're going to put on the uh, on our uh, flank steak. I mean our skirt steak because we're doing fajitas. Um, now these are are going to be our own rubs that we're going to be putting out and so we've been testing out stuff for a long time now um, but I'm using two right now I'm testing out two I actually have a cut just like a little section of the of the uh, skirt steak uh, like that I put one on two different pieces two different rubs and then I got some shrimps and um, I put a uh, one of the rubs on that too. Mike Selly, what's going on? John Smith, Brian Bailey, Bay Rick, Amy Jackson Ford, Richard Lesnar. What is going on, people? Um, so look, uh, I don't know if you guys know this. I know some people that are in the group are on here, and there's probably some people that are not in our private VIP group, which Anybody can join our private VIP group as long as you're not an asshole, right? So we're having a uh, kebab challenge at the end of the month. Um, and so if you're not in the group, you can't do the kebab challenge, which means you can't win. And what you could win is a, um, a gift card to grillbeast.com uh, or grillbeastfoods.com. And we're having two different categories. We're having like a... A ninja category and amateur category and thank you uh, Jason for coming up with that name the ninja term to use I like that term way better than the uh, pro thing Wayne Richardson what's up Barry what's up Dwight what's going on uh, Bob Phillips good evening to you man uh, so anyway yeah I'm actually I'm kind of messing around with the, uh, the P settings on this uh, pit boss uh, I don't know if the P settings on the new one set itself, set by itself like some of the other brands, but this one's an older one, so you set it, you have to mess with the P settings. But um, I don't know, for some reason it's acting funky tonight. Um, it's just burning hot, which is okay, but because uh, I just, get, all I gotta do is turn it down and it, and it acts right. But I got it set on 300, but it's burning at like 350. I don't know. I've, I've changed that piece setting twice, and it still hasn't changed. Jason, what's going on? Jennifer Bates, what's happening? Wayne Richardson, what's going on? Hey, um, I can't tell how many people we got on. If somebody could throw that number in there, that'd be awesome. Uh, just, just to give me an idea, that'd be nice. Uh, but I'm doing, uh, we're doing fajita night. So, um, the only thing I have on here right now is I have... Uh, two jalapenos that are wrapped in bacon. Um, so what I did is I took and I cut the jalapeno in half. I put the bacon in, I put them back together, and I wrapped it in bacon. I mean, I put the cheese in, which is pepper jack cheese. That's what I like. I don't like the cream cheese. Um, but this bad boy is just about done. Now this one here, um, I lost a toothpick to it, so the bacon did not stay on there really good, but that's okay. Then I got a couple onions. All I do with the onions is, um, is I cut them in half and I uh, put some olive oil on them. And um, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate that. Um, and, and usually I do salt, pepper, garlic, but we have a garlic type rub that we're putting together. And so I just put that on it tonight. And I'm going to see how it turns out with just that. And uh, we'll see just how, you know, hopefully these things are close to what we want. And then we'll be really close to uh, putting them out soon. Like I said, we've been working on this stuff for a long, long time now. Um, let me see. Shannon, that's right. It's church night, buddy. Uh, grilled beast meats. Meat pens. Pens. All grilled beast meat pens. Yes. 
yes uh that i actually have the samples already in my house uh but getting those together i have not done yet i have like a whole bunch of small type grilling tools that um that i'm putting together um, but I'm trying to make sure I don't put together too many tools and, and buy too much inventory at one time of each thing. So, um, but that is that is something that's been on the uh, chart for a while, Jason. But I know we've had a ton of people get our new grill brush, the Beast brush. Um, and actually, literally, um, we only have a couple left. We have pretty much sold out of the grill brushes. Uh, but we have more like on the way we had some air shipped to us. So we had those now Those are pretty much gone. I think we have two or three left and then in two About April 15th. We'll be in stock with with them again when we run out uh, Cindy Penn, what's up? Oh Cindy Whippy Cindy Whippy Cindy Whippy. I know that name uh, Patrick Spall What's going on brother? Chaz Munder, what's going on? Dave Thomas, what's up? Gary Bishop. Man, we got a lot of people on here tonight. Nice. So anyway, I'm about ready. Alright, so I'm gonna take and throw. See like I did, like I said, I just took some uh, small pieces of flank steak, I mean uh, skirt steak, and put one of my seasonings on each one. And then We're gonna take, grill them. I'm gonna taste them. If the kids, kids are like messing, they're dying their hair tonight. So Riley dyed her hair. Uh, actually, I'm glad. She, usually she dyes her hair pink and all that kind of stuff. She dyed her hair brown, um, which it looks really nice. And then my other daughter Tyler, um, she dyed her hair, and it's kind of a, it's it's reddish. But it looks really good. So I don't know what color exactly it is. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah. So um, uh, so they're in there messing with all that stuff. And uh, as usual, we do late dinners around here. We're just used to it. Living in New Orleans. Like, we don't live in New Orleans anymore. But we're just so used to living in New Orleans. And we just got used to eating late. And so we eat 9.30, 10.30 at night. That's just, you know. It's just how we do it. Ooh, that thing's going to be nice. It smells beautiful. Gary Bishop. Yeah, so with the Pit Boss, this is like one of my favorite things about the Pit Boss, and it makes it unique to other um, pellet grills. Uh, it has a plate. You know, you had the... the the plate that that's over the fire box, right? The fire pot. And it, they allow it to slide, and that way you can get flames, and you can um, grill steaks and all that kind of stuff right over uh, direct fire. So, um, yeah, so the meat hook is right here, but this is a small piece of meat, so that's why I'm using the tongs. So whenever I put the big piece of meat, the bigger piece of meat, I'll throw that on there. But that the, uh, the, the meat hook is so daggone sharp. I'll let that on there just another minute. Um, so, Beast Spice. Yeah, so we actually need to come up with the name of uh, the, the rub line, right? And so, um, I know I've thrown a few things around, but we'll probably do a contest to help us come up with the name. Uh, just like we did with Feast with the Beast. Um, I know I, I figured Beast Rubs, Beast, I don't know, Beast whatever. Um, we're going to do something like that, but we're going to have help get everybody else to help us come up with the name. And we'll probably get people to help us come up with the names of each type of rub, too. Um, just to, I'm, I'm trying to think of this one I had the other day. And for some reason, it's just not coming to mind. Maybe that's a good sign that it's not a good one. Uh, Tuberdo in the house. Uh, what's up? Oh, Jamie, what's going on, man? Uh, Scott. Oh, I'm sipping on um, uh, wine. It's called Uppercut. It's 14.2%. And it was on sale at Rouse's. It's usually $17.99 and it was um, 
Nice deal. So Beast Church, that's right, buddy. Uh, Mark Davies, what's going on? Do you recommend Pit Boss over other pillar? Oh, so um, here's the thing. I have only used two different pellet grills. Or like this is, I don't know whether to call this a pellet grill belt, pellet smoker. It does both. Um, I have zero complaints about this thing, really. I, I've, I've had really good luck with it. It's done, it's done me well. The big advantage this Pit Boss has over all the others is... You see that... You see that, uh, you see that fire right there? So, you do this. See, when you're smoking something, you put that plate, you slide the plate over. When you want to grill something, you open that bad boy up. Crank this thing up a little bit. So, you do that whenever you want to grill something. So, I am putting this piece on now. Can y'all hear that? I'm going to throw this shrimp on too. But I'll throw that over here. Alright, so I just got to make sure I don't talk and uh, burn my shrimp up. Or dry it out. What is going on, Wayne? Uh, cheers, Mitch. Okay, so uh, Jason says that the Camp Chef has a sear and grill section too. All right, so see, I didn't know that. Um, so I, I don't know. You know, I haven't used enough uh, different pellet grills, and I haven't been around enough different ones to be able to tell you that this one's better than the other and all that. What I do know is I only paid 350 bucks for this one. Um, and I know a lot of the other ones, they're seven, eight, a thousand, twelve hundred bucks. I don't know what makes them better other than the controller. You know what I mean? So the, I know the controller on this one isn't as up to date and as, um, advanced as a lot of the other ones. So I will say that too. I have to turn my shrimp. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing sprinkles on there tonight, uh, Rick. Daniel Wilson, hey, editing spreadsheets. Wallace, dude, um, I might be able to use your help on some spreadsheet stuff. I'm not that good at it, and sometimes I need to do spreadsheet stuff. Yoders, uh, you know what? <clears throat> um, and I don't know, I've never used a Yoder pellet grill, but I will tell you this, Yoder is like top of the line. <clears throat> and you'd pay for that too, so... Oh, but no, I'd love to have a Yoder. I think Yoders are, I mean, anything I've ever heard about Yoders, they are top notch, they're heavy duty, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but you're touching raw food with the same tongs. Dude, once these tongs, so what you're telling me is you use different tongs when you touch raw, once this hits that fire, it's, I've been doing that my entire grilling life, is using the same tongs, that I put my food on. Once you hit that, I mean, that, that, that's a couple hundred degrees, more than that. So I got the same seasoning on the shrimp as I do on one of the skirt steaks. No, that, that I tell you what, it's that's never gotten me sick, man. Uh, who is that, uh, Scott? It has never gotten me sick, and I've seen, I don't know, I want to say hundreds or even I, at least hundreds of people do it. A pit boss, the non Wi-Fi versus a lot. Yeah, so the pit boss, um, this one has no Wi-Fi, and I know, um, I don't know all of them that do Wi-Fi. I know Rectech has Wi-Fi, and that's some pretty cool stuff, right? Oh, yeah, Mike Selly. He's got the RT680. Um, and I tell you what, man, uh, the Wi-Fi on your smoker is pretty cool because you can control the entire thing. 
you can shut that sucker down. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. So that's that's pretty hot, man. You know, you can't you can't argue with that. I don't know if any of the other ones do all that. Jason, he has a Yoder. He would be he would be able to answer if uh, Yoder does that or not. Um. Yeah, Mike, that's how you build up the immune system. <laughs> that's right. You start the kids off doing that, right? Uh, Gary Golden, what's going on, buddy? Uh, do you, so Gary, you have a Yoder also, is what you're saying? Bob, um, my Rectech Bull for the price and customer service. To, so there's Bob with the Rectech. I'm telling you, Rectech, I've heard a lot. I've never heard anything negative about Rectech, the company. I mean, they're awesome, right? Um, but you can say that about a lot of companies. You know, there's, there's a lot of great companies, a lot of shit companies. Um... No, what do you mean? What about you? Uh, what's up, Chris Goffer? What's going on, my man? Whoa. About to cook that thing too long. Um, so, right there. I need to take my uh, my onions off. <clears throat> so, wait, I do need to taste this steak just to kind of see how it turns out. I'm gonna um, this one's ready to cut. Nice medium rare. I'll tell you what. That rub is on point. It's really, really good. Mm. Oh my God. We might have that one ready. I am out of uniform, bud. It's kind of chilly out here tonight. I just got out the shower. So, you know. <clears throat> uh, Noah, it's pronounced no. With a long, Noe? Is that right, Noe? I hope I got that right, Noe. All right, who, what else did I miss? Yoder, Yoder is not on Wi-Fi. So uh, that that to me is a downfall because the Wi-Fi, like I have a um, dag on it. I just remember I forgot the name. I have a um, uh, a probe temp that um, is Wi-Fi, and that thing is nice. Although I barely use it, uh, when I do, it's nice. Different tongs is not. Yeah, dude, I'm not doing different tongs every time I pick up raw meat, and I've never seen anybody do that. But I'm sure there are people to do it. Green Mountain Grills has Wi-Fi, and it's far better. Whoa. Uh-oh. Somebody just said, Kevin, he said it's far better than Rectex. So the shrimp has the same seasoning as I put on that piece right there. Mm. It's good, but I got some more shrimp ready to grow up inside. And so I'm going to try some of the other seasoning. Like I'm not complaining about it. Ooh. I broke my mouth. Mmm. <clears throat> That was a piece of the, uh, the jalapeno wrapped in bacon. Um, what else we got? 
So Bob says his Rectech Bull has a Wi-Fi, which makes it nice and keeps the tape right on. Um, Gary likes his iGrill too. So speaking of the iGrill too, uh, my brother Pat had an iGrill too. He didn't like his. He had tons of trouble, and Weber would not like. They they kept putting him through ringers. He had to just do all the kinds of stuff to try to get it backed by the warranty, and he ended up just tossing it in trash. However, I know other people that's that loves theirs. You know, sometimes you just get a bad one. Um. So Chris Coffer says it's four probes. Uh, I don't know which one Chris Coffer said he has. Mike Selly, Rec Tech six year warranty, and you get the owner's cell number. Hey man, I I, I kind of do the same thing. I put out my cell number everywhere. Uh, hey Dave, just tuned in. What you cooking, dude? I'm Kent. I am testing out a couple different rubs um, that we've been working on for a while, and so I got some skirt steak, and I just been, I just got a. I like them both. I like the first one better though. The second one has a little bit of a sweetness that I don't care for. Like I don't like, <clears throat> I don't like any of my meat to have sweetness to it. But that's my personal preference. So I think the winner for tonight What's on this? Mark Davies says he's too lazy to use uh, <laughs> electric probes. He, he measures by beer. So Dave Thomas, right. I've heard the same thing, that Rectech has a credible um, customer service. I have. I've never heard. I've never heard anybody uh, complain about Rectech service or anything. I really have not. So, Kevin, for <clears throat> uh, three years free. Last three years, you have to pay them a hundred dollars per year to use the warranty. So that kind of sucks a little bit. But, I mean, for a hundred bucks, you get. Your smoker guaranteed. So um, that's kind of like buying the extra warranty on your car or your TV and all that. You may never use it, and so you end up, you know, um, spending a few hundred bucks. Uh, and then you look back and you're like, well, I could have just bought a new one. Well, yeah, you could have. I generally don't do the extra warranties. I always feel like I get screwed. Tell you what. Both of those rubs are good, but the one has a little sweetness that I don't care for. So that one's going back to the drawing board. But the one that I like, I'm doing the rest of the skirt steak in that. And I'm doing the rest of the shrimp in that too, just to see how... It, you know, there's a lot of uh, seasonings that you can cross over. But I also have that garlic rub that I might throw in there too, just to see how that does. So I might do half the shrimp and the garlic and half of it in that steak. Checking pellet grills on my normal Weber charcoals. Oh, versus the Weber charcoals. Huh. So, that's the real question, Bill. So, the you're right, the convenience is like unbeatable. You just come out here and you just turn it on. Really, you cannot beat that with a stick. So, um, that is what hooked me on the pellets, and that's what hooks, that's why, that's one reason grilling has gotten so daggone popular, because it's not the work it used to be. I mean, I know my Weber, I, I fire it up every now and then, but not very often. Um, the barrel house, I fire that up more than the Weber. 
Um, and that's, I don't even fire that thing up a whole lot. I do when I do certain types of meats. However, if you don't get the right pellets, you're not going to get that smoky flavor. So I've tried all, all, all kinds of pellets. Lumberjack pellets are the best. If you're doing pellets, you should be using lumberjack pellets. No doubt about it. Uh, Shannon. So the new G, I think he's talking about Green Mountain Grill Primes. Is that is that the new grill that they have out, Shannon? See, a pellet grill was used to win the 2018 Jack Deer. What? Now, Kevin, when they did that, what pellets did they use? And did they have an extra... Because I've seen people put the smoke tubes inside a pellet grill. And to me, if you have to do that, that's kind of... I don't know. I guess it's okay. I shouldn't, I shouldn't dog it. Uh, but it kind of pisses me off because you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to get the... The same flavor out of a pellet grill that you can do anything else. Lumberjack, that's right. So, Kevin, <clears throat> uh, do you know what kind of pellet, or is uh, Bayou Rick, is, are you saying that they used lumberjack pellets at the Jack Daniels um, um, competition? Let me see, who was that? Kevin? Let me see, also a lumberjack fan. I use competition pellets. So right now I'm using, here, let me get it. <clears throat> oh, check it out. I'm using the competition blend right now myself. Right? And then see it's, it's uh, hickory, cherry, and maple. And you can definitely smell it, man. And I'll tell you what, it burns better too. It does. It burns a little hotter. At least in this grill, it seems to burn hotter. Either that or my thermometer is just off, which that is very possible too. Um, yeah, so check it, Mark Davies. Check out the check out the lumberjack pellets. Um, and we put this rub out. Be ready because this stuff is really good. So we're not far from it. We just need to finalize a few more things, and we'll be throwing a couple of them out there. So cookingpellets.com. Now, we also were a lumberjack dealer. Like, I wasn't even actually going to say that. But um, the reason we went with lumberjack is because of the quality of the pellets. I mean, I've used all different kinds of pellets, and they all sucked. Shannon Castle, Dan... Um, um, they turned me on to, uh, the lumberjack pellets and I got hooked on them and they were really hard to get. So there was only one person around here that had them, one dealer, and he was kind of a pain in the ass to even get anything from them. So I was like, well, I can fix that. I just become a dealer and then I can get my own. So about a board dust is, are you saying Arbor dust? Uh, by you, Rick. Can we pre? Yeah, you can pre-order. Uh, now, are you talking about the grill brush, or are you talking about pellets? Uh, we only have a couple grill brushes left, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. We're trying to see. We're trying to figure out how to ship the pellets to make it economical for people. Um, so Bob Phillips, he says he uses lumberjack and. Uh, Use them in a smoke tube for cold smoking. Yeah, so it's funny you say cold smoking because we're working on a cold smoke generator. Um, we've done version one. It wasn't even close to good. It burned. It put that, put out a lot of good smoke, but it had like lots of other problems. So we put that back to the drawing board with the factory. And um, oh, so the dust from yeah. So that's actually so that's a really good point. Um, Rick is, and I've used a bunch of different pellets, and a lot of them create tons of dust. Tons of dust, and they don't burn as efficient, and all that kind of stuff. And really, if you educate yourself on pellets, you'll realize what crap pellets are out there. And I'm not going to name the companies that have them, but I do know a few of them. 
Uh, and the only reason I know is because I educated myself on uh, where people go and have their pellets made. So, um, Lumberjack, Ash, uh, shit, Rick, is that what you're asking? Yeah, I think that's what he's talking about, Shannon. Um, Doug, hey, Beast, Doug from Cali. Pellet dust, Lumberjack is low in dust. It is low in dust. I tell you what, since I've been using the lumberjack, um, you don't I don't clean that thing as much. I don't have to. Uh, butcher's barbecue won't one a one with a I assume you're saying rec tech one hundred, Kevin. Or because you said feck one hundred, I'm not sure. Uh, hey I bought an expert grill charcoal cooks good. Um, all right, so Brian says he bought an extra expert grill charcoal i'm not sure what that is either what's up greg coffer jennifer bates oh there you are all right brian uh do you use whiskey when grilling uh i have been known to uh drink wine uh vodka with grapefruit juice uh some crown and those are my three things that i usually stick to <laughs> i don't drink beer and i don't drink you know, dude, I'll do some old granddad or something like that, too. Now, I haven't done that in a while, but, you know, we grew up with that stuff. Um, so, anyway, look, I got to go. Kids are wanting some food. I got to finish this puppy up. And uh, y'all have yourself a good night. And uh, I'm glad y'all came on here to spend some time with me. Remember, uh, the, the, the kebab challenge, the grill beast... VIP Kebab Challenge is the last weekend of this month, which is the 30th and 31st. You need to be in the group, um, the Grill Beast VIP group, to, to do the challenge. Uh, we're going to have two categories. We're going to have Ninja and we're going to have Amateur. All right? So that way, everybody has a chance. If you're really good, I'll know it, and that's and I'm going to throw you in a Ninja. But if you know your Ninja, or at least close to it, or you want to compete with the Ninjas, just tell, just say you're a ninja when, at the start, okay? Don't be embarrassed, all right? And don't don't be shy. I, that's the way I should put. It. Don't be shy. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night, Fireball Shannon. Good night, John, Ken, everybody. Y'all take it easy. Mark T, John, Mike, Sally, Cindy, Whippy. Peace out. Take it easy, y'all. <laughs>